We were challenged to speak about this thing about the place climate and um, construction idea, but then we decided to bring three projects that somehow brought up this, uh, these concerns on the topic, that, which was like um, in the, uh, these um, regulations, local regulations, um, uh, constraints, uh, restraints, and um, and maybe and sometimes opportunities. Um, um, how to say um, new new responses to different places and, or to different uh, projects. So we brought three three one like one. It's a um, carpentry conversion in a rural place, but next to the sea. Uh, the other one is uh, the. In English, the steps of the truth. I think you know the meaning. It's it's uh, here in Porto, in the historical area, and then two houses in a rural environment also, but to the inside. Okay, so this is us. Uh, Rodrigo and I. We now work under the name Architecture Matters. That is like they represent duality. This duality of meaning means like matters of architecture and architecture that matters like because we perform so many activities that go from curat curatorial, editorial and uh, architectural practice and so and we have been working uh, a lot on this and also in an academic scene too, too with the Port Academy and in this paper so we are in many activities and this is the best name and also the designers found this name for us that uh, represent our activity. So um, this first project is uh, an old carpentry, and we're forced to transform this in in a um, house for a couple with no kids. This this is located in in um, Villa Praia de Ancre, which which is very it's up north, close to the sea, and uh, the house is in a, it's on the bank of the river Ancre. It's a beautiful place, and uh, so the idea of um, a new program and transforming in in this uh, house and the willing to prevent to preserve this industrial character meant a paradox. So the new structure would somehow um, oppose to the to original walls of the of the house, and but then. But then they would have to contain the new use like, for, from the carpentry to a, to a house. And, but this intention of doing this uh, uh, change, would, this would hold the, the new roof and with the new big openings that clearly open towards the river and um, towards the river and the, the garden around the house. And the question of uh, matter and um, geometry um, would, um, would would present the new character of this house with this industrial atmosphere, and and the wood would uh, means that the wood doors means this um, to holds the premise of being a, a new house with an industrial character. Basically, is this the the idea? So this is the, the plan. Just a couple with no kids. They wanted a big kitchen, one bedroom, and then here a mezzanine where there's an office, office space here. And then this house here in, in the Escadas das Verdades, which leans over the Rio Douro in the historic area. And this, uh, uh, we wanted to restore the identity of this house. And once uh, this house, tiny house ho houses like five families inside and and we wanted to restore the, its limits and bring back this identity of being uh, the house in this historical center because the house suffered from um, several uh, overlap uh, of uh, several adjacent build buildings there you can see here so we went back to restore the perimeter of the house and going back to origin, we we promoted this uh, uh, connection with the with the garden at different levels of the of the building. We promote this vertical trip that we go up the house, 
on different levels and we have a better communication and, and view of the river and the garden. To do so, and it, because it's so difficult access of this house, we, we have reused the, the stone for the pavements and so on. And he, here at the entrance level, the house now, um, it's, it's shown the truth of construction of the house. It unveils the constructions, and everything is shown in their natural appearance. And the stairs are a moment of the house where you see, where um, it's not only because it's in the middle of the stairs of the historical area, but also they represent a moment of the house. Whereas you go up, you have to, you prepare yourself for the next um, move and for the next uh, function and special uh, uh, space of the house. And as it go up, it, it traces up itself all up because it no longer reveals the truth of the construction and it becomes um, um, completely, uh, how do you say, uh, abstract. And you can no longer see some details of the construction inside. Yes, some the plans. So you can see that there are always connection with the different the levels of the the garden, and this is a brief presentation. Uh, to end, this it's two houses in, in Guimarães, also north, uh, and this uh, this place is called El Lugar de Montenegro, and it, re it really reflects the the, uh, the paradigm of a place, a rural place, changed by the industrial area, and the property was. Um, had the uh, factory buildings, warehouses, and the house was also getting bigger as the family was growing. And uh, by request of the clients, we wanted to have the most um, use of the property in order to have the coexistence of two houses in this uh, plot, the, the existing one, the new one. So everything was demolished. All the buildings were demolished, and with the use of these stones from the factory buildings, we designed a new topography that would contain, would postpone the physical limits of this uh, garden of the house and of the property. And these new walls would contain a new house, a courtyard house that, unfortunately, was not built. But uh, but the house, it's it was huge. The, <laughs> And so this uh, this new topography um, would make this new kind of, of garden and would free space to live in and, and for the, the other house to exist, but it, it didn't in the end. And the existing house, we, co we completely transformed it and adapted to the new place and to the new, this new topography. And of course, you, the intention was one was to um, to make the most useful area the, to gain with the most useful areas and don't don't have circulation areas like this. And uh, and we always look for in in our projects this special continuum that all the spaces inside spaces have this uh, continuity and connection in between. And so here and. That the, the other one, the new house would be like um, the the distortion of the, the the perimeter of the existing one, and with this the, the existing house would gain some preponderance, and um, and like the existing walls would gain some um, would be like prior to the, the existing house. Yeah. Okay, and then we can discuss. <laughs> this was a, um, a a bit the rough, ambiguous invitation we we had for you. I mean, and, and then the nice thing, Diogo and 
and Rodrigo and Amelia was that each one of you could interpret it in, in whatever way you you want it, you, know, you, you want it. Um, so it's this, this idea of talking about a place and the qualities of a place and then uh, a particular aspect of architecture. Um, so yeah, from detail to site, we have 49 more slides to go. Uh, the, the, these are the introductory slides which uh, go really fast. It's, it's a very nice uh, publicity campaign by Emma Stone, yeah, Louis Vuitton with Emma Stone at the Villa Malaparte. And, and, and this is to illustrate this, um, the, this condition uh, of us architects asking, uh, being asked to translate uh, qualities of, of a site, uh, topography, build context, regulations into, into a spatial response. And that's for everyone. Basically, that's, uh, that, that's at the basis of our work. Um, yeah, it's very, very nice it's slides. <laughs> it's, it's, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a nice coincidence. Uh, but in any case, the, the angle that we would like to, to share with you now is as where with architecture, there's a, a conventional timeline which begins with, with reading a site and, and, and trying to understand the series of situations and gradually moving up towards uh, developing a typology and, 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 and a type of building. And then towards the end, the, the moment of developing a detail, a technical detail for getting a thing built comes. No. And, and our provocation today is to try to, to do the opposite thing. Let, let's try to talk about details and to see how much of the site we can understand through a detail. Um, yeah, we, we have been lately looking at at the Köppen uh, classification of, of climates, maps of the world, and uh, it's it's very interesting to see how many how many different colors each of the the countries we were based in or we work at have. Uh, well, that's Italy and Switzerland, two or three colors, and and the UK, which is quite uh, monochrome, as you can see. Green is rain, rain every day, I think. <laughs> But then we get to Mexico, which I, I was really proud to find that it's a it's a country in the world with the is the most colorful. It's the one with the with the most colors, which means uh, the different climatic conditions and, and all of that. So n nothing that I was unaware of, but it's it's really the, the most uh, climatically variable country in the world. Um, and these are some images that Dario found last night after five hours of browsing. We have really uh, a really clear image of an image we needed to find to, to illustrate the, the conversation. And, and he finally did it. And I was really proud that it's in, in Mexico. It's a, an archaeological site called Uxmal in Yucatan, uh, which is fantastic. I've never been there. But the, the idea we're trying to illustrate or the, the argument is this one about uh, how Architecture in the past was built with, with very few materials, normally with one material or two. And that's why when we look at ruins and antique buildings, we, we find them to be so powerful and so compelling. And it's funny, we were reading about uh, one of the books by, by Livio Vacchini, uh, and, and he makes a, a precise point about this, how when, when things, when buildings lose their function and when they're not usable to anyone anymore, it's really when one can more clearly read the, the congruence between architectural form and expression. And, and it's something we probably we have talked about in the past, but we, we, we haven't been able to, to put it to words so, so clearly like that. So anyway, we, we're really interested in this condition of architecture, how to, um, how to achieve the, this sort of radicality, we, 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 we would like to, to call it, which is a, a solution. The, the problem with our world today is that uh, we, we have so many expectations in terms of structure and uh, comfort and, and buildings have to be at the right temperature. We're having a, a very nice conversation with Xavier Aguilo, a, a brilliant structural and, and services engineer from London, about how, you know, the, the, the expectations for a building nowadays is that they, they shouldn't have any deflection at all. The temperature has to be constant and all of that. And, and, and he was almost criticizing that, no? saying that... Uh, that you know things could could be 
even more efficient if we if we allowed for a bit of if if we broaden this uh, um, this um, range of expectations. Um, yeah, this, this uh, 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 painting by Thomas Daniel, uh, and all of this is in, in relation to a project we you're, you're going to see now. No, but but we're really interested in, the, in this uh, looking back at the past and looking at, at essential forms, and we don't really care about what that building in the painting. But then we we have collage. Uh, collage was for we 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 care about this uh, this really strong uh, essential quality. Okay. Anyway, we, we, we won't talk about the project. We, we'll just try to illustrate how in our work these, these situations become um, present. Uh, so lately we have been trying in, in, in a competition we, we submitted recently <coughs> to try to, to develop a, a, an envelope, a, a, a facade, which is, uh, deals with, with the access a device to regulate uh, the, climate, the, the climate factors like both. Of course, sunlight, temperature, humidity. So everything should happen at the facade. And, and in order to, for it to comply with all of this, the facade has, becomes like a space on its own. As you can see, it's really thick uh, and it has many, many different instances in, in which it can regulate the, the factors. Uh, so it's a system of um, the external, it, it has two uh, levels of glazing. The external one projects out like a like an accordion almost, and then there's a sliding one inside, and then the more typical uh, solar protections like the you know, blinds and things like that. Uh, the, the whole strategy for the project was to do it, first of all, uh, for it to have a size that could, th this gain thickness that I'm talking about, could serve to more things than just the, the traditional uh, facade. Uh, and it was really a space that you know transformed in, in, in many different ways to to, to regulate the, uh, the climatic factors. Uh, if I may add, uh, what Diego was speaking about before with the consultant, that today we have so many uh, contingencies that we have to respect, uh, fire insulation, uh, ventilation, heating, etc., that make things really complex. But at the same time, we have this uh, goal of research to still have just the two rocks and the, and the third one on the top. So just to have uh, three pieces of stone, but we cannot. We cannot uh, achieve the, the same complexity and the rules ask. And so we were trying in this competition to work with these two contra uh, con, um, contradiction. How we can do some things really technical, really technological that answer all the, com the, the constraints but the atmosphere, the space that generate, it's still so essential and minimal, like the, the Maya ruins. And, uh, and again, without going too much into construction detail, in, uh, in this competition, we will see later the plan. It's really just this, uh, this wall, and this wall answers with everything. So this is the plan. So you can see this one is the structure in wood. So in reality, what it's found that the structural effort that uh, we need to, to, to sustain the whole building, it's really massive, it's uh, eight stories, uh, it's really reduced. But then we have ventilation, uh, heating, cooling, a lot of insulation. We will not tell you the place yet. And then the exterior is the cladding with the rugged earth. And the rugged earth, again, it's cladding inside but then it's not anymore for her thermal insulation, but just for her aesthetic to hide this uh, sliding system. And the double glazing that uh, we, uh, uh, we are using is to generate a microclimate. So according with the season uh, going on, uh, the two windows stay open and closed, allowing to generate uh, a greenhouse, a small one. But instead to have like a whole building like a greenhouse, we have 228 small greenhouses that they open and close together according with the day and the season. Uh, and of course, the south facade and the east and the west and the north got the same system, but with opening the chain during the day and the season. And also the, um, uh, the shutter, 
Uh, of course, in, uh, in the east and the west, they are horizontal to protect the, the low rise of the sun. And on the south are, uh, no, sorry, are horizontal on the south and vertical in the east and the, in the west. In the north, what is again interesting, the system lose the, um, the inner glass because you don't need to do any more the, the greenhouse as the, the sun uh, never arrived in the, in the north one. So you have just one that controls the ventilation through, through the season. Again, without to go too into deep in the main system, uh, all the skin, of course, got a big atrium. And so, so the roof uh, allowed the flux of air to go through the building or to be uh, contained and so uh, real. And, and again, the goal was always to be, to try to find this, the simplest detail so the, the external glazing is really just a, a piece of glass with uh, a sum of engineering that of course was not uh, too easy and if we would win and realize it wouldn't be too easy to, <laughs> to build and to hold. Uh, but again, from outside just to see this uh, big painting, just uh, opening and closing, like um, uh, how you call it? Branchi di un pesce. Yes. Just the, the fish uh, system of respiration or uh, uh, an instrument we were speaking. Yeah, just that, that open and allow the building to become uh, something uh, that, uh, that breathes. And, and again, in the AXO, you can see again this uh, monolithic uh, expression of the rammed earth that in reality it's a super technological system of pipes and, uh, and whatever <laughs> the consultant will be able to, to insert. And here, yeah, uh, a series of uh, of wind of um, of image of situation. Yeah. So here, the, this is a version where the external glazing is is attached to the building. No, then uh, a different option. And and the, this uh, the internal glazing slides uh, and hides within the the piers. No. So then uh, a different configuration is the, the external glazing opening, no, for ventilation. And then the next one is that that can open, and th this is a, a, a well, one of the summer strategies where the, the internal glazing slides, and basically reduces really the, the thermal um, volume of the building. Um, and then the, the the third element, which is uh, the blinds, that depending on the orientation, they, they have different um, different layouts, uh, yeah, different so options with the time. Uh, the system works all together. So it's not that uh, every office chooses what open to close, but it's really the building that uh, breathes it with, uh, yep. with the weather. Then the, the building has you know, um, all, all of these components, are a kit of parts that have a very systemic uh, construction with reduced time. So most of it gets assembled off site or get, gets produced and then craned into place. Um, and well, uh, the, the structural system that probably we we won't get much into, but again, based completely on, on pre-made um, components. Yeah, the project was really complex, of course. It's, uh, you can say it's, it was an extension of a university. So uh, what was interesting, we had a lot of offices, classrooms, cafeteria, restaurant, auditorium, and um, and the way was how to put again all a complex uh, situation, like in the most simplest and reduced uh, elements. You already understood that we, we choose, uh, yeah, and all the fluxes, of course, because all the offices need to work with uh, one access uh, and one security level, the, the classroom to have the door in an order, the cafeteria in a third level. And again, according with the day uh, and the time, uh, people. Some part need to be open, some part need to be closed. And so just to add a bit of complexity as so we are every day, uh, every day use. But again, all this complexity, also from the interior, in this case the reference is uh, from Chilida, it's how all this mass, etc., can generate a space of, of breath. Uh, that of course it's a breath for a climatic reason, but so as um, a space of an effect. Um, and we will see in the plan how it was all the discussion about uh, all this complexity of the program, not to speak anymore about function, but to speak about uh, how we use space. So if we use space alone, 
with a few colleagues or as a collectivity. So of course the building it's uh, it's one layer that it's the the, the perfect square uh, that have this system, and and again as we put all the technical uh, ventilation, uh, cooling, uh, insulation etc. and structure on the outside, this allow us to have a lot of freedom to inside. So once we just solve the vertical uh, circulation with the stairs and elevator as a traditional course. Um, we subdivide the plan in three areas. So it's a private, public, private. Uh, and again, of course, this allows to, to reduce the structure, to reduce the span. And we, we did this uh, twist that uh, every floor is just turn of 90 degrees. So the, the three partition, one times it's uh, vertical, is uh, north-south and uh, into the floor it's horizontal east-west. This of course allow the light that come from uh, the common area to, to change through the day and bring all the time a light in the central core. So in uh, every odd floor it's from east and west, in the um, even floor from south and north. To generate always kind of a, a dynamic uh, core. And putting the function at the end that are just piece of furniture, so this give uh, a lot of flexibility uh, according to, to the building. And uh, we have the, the solo spaces, the community, no, not the community, but a couple of spaces. And then the community way of learning or working would always happen in the, in the courtyard with the relation of, the, um, of this uh, double or triple or eight uh, floor void. And, uh, and probably what uh, we, we like a lot about this, uh, this strategy is when you overlap the floor, uh, the simplicity that you have in, uh, in any given floor or situation uh, gives you the complexity of the building when you, uh, you overlap uh, floor by floor by floor. Or when you just remove again the, the program and ju just put the structure, uh, you have this kind of uh, Palladian uh, palazzo of, uh, of floor. And everything that you see just uh, structural and technical and all the, the space in between, it's, uh, it's free to use. And uh, like a little bit uh, the reference we, we showed before. And, and to finish, uh, trying to be logical with the, with the topic that we begin with the detail to explain, to gradually get to the site. Uh, we, we're presenting you the, the site. The, this structural and, and compositional principle that Dario is talking about, this almost Cardo and, and the Comano, goes beyond the building. And even though this is not the way that, that, we, <laughs> that we designed it or the, the process that we follow, it's interesting to see how, how many correlations uh, one, one we can find at the end between developed uh, scheme and detail and the site. So finally, we present the site to you. So the plan of the main building is that one and, and the building itself um, beyond all the, because beyond all of the internal spaces and that, what one is always expected to the arrangement of the open areas around circulations and all of that. So basically this, uh, this cross of north to south and east and west uh, circulations become uh, almost the landscape. Uh, so uh, yeah, that's the, the campus is the University of Lausanne. Um, and I don't know if you have the other, yeah. So that's the, the proposal in place there. So through again, a, a more complex uh, system of circulation that probably we won't get into. This is a building with that uh, cross-like system we described, but then the way in which it integrates into the into the setting the university is is quite congruent uh, uh, and resulting from this uh, almost orthogonal strategy um yeah it was the north south connection between the um, train station and the, the park and the lake on the south of so the train station there and from the other side this would be the um, the future uh, uh, expansion of the university. So the concept was to create this uh, east-west uh, square plaza mm. to, to allow all the, the building of the campus to, uh, to have this empty space in between.
So yeah, that was from side to detail. Okay, so for this conversation, uh, we were actually speaking uh, over the last months what to bring. Uh, and we had this idea of um, taking the opportunity to talk about a building that we'll no longer talk about because it, it's actually a building that we were designing for the last two years, but we are not getting to build it. Uh, but hopefully uh, we learned something in between and we are now in charge of creating a new building for the same site with the same program. Uh, but uh, by learning with the, with the process that we were uh, facing. So it's actually a winery in Algarve. So it's, uh, Algarve is not known by the, the wine. Uh, it's not a wine. It is a wine region, but it's not known by being a wine region. Uh, so uh, one of our clients uh, just bought a huge property uh, by the ocean. Uh, and we were demanded to think uh, out of a building. And to, to talk about program constraints uh, and pro program uh, opportunities, uh, the demand was actually to, to think about uh, an industrial building, uh, but of course to mix it with a touristic approach, uh, with a shop and a restaurant. Uh, and so actually two programs that uh, we are used to see, but they don't actually, they don't actually uh, fit for the, um, the, the generic tourists. Uh, we wanted to, to see this, uh, this program as, a, as an opportunity, so we conceived the building kind of um, thinking in a museum experience where there would be a route uh, that all buildings would be visit visitable by the, um, by the visitants. This means that uh, we would, of course, uh, not uh, hide uh, the reason the building exists, which is actually the industrial part of the program, but we would consider it the core of the space and we would uh, create a lot of voids in the building for this main patio uh, and then assuming the industrial character as the goal of the, the building that of course would have uh, other kind of spaces like shops that would see through the, see through the landscape uh, or even restaurants where we could of course try actually the, um, the food by ordering the drinks. Uh, because as being as an industrial building, we could not have a, um, a restaurant inside, so we would, we would have to have a menu based on drinks, and food would come as an appetizer, something like this. Um, so, but we were also here to talk about um, site constraints and site opportunities, and uh, the land that was bought is actually very good uh, soil for planting vineyards, uh, but very bad soil for uh, building a building. Um, this site is actually very, uh, very near a, tect a tectonic uh, rift. So we are three kilometers away uh, from a, a tectonic uh, failure, let's say it, uh, which means um, uh, that, of course, uh, the capacity of the concrete used and the amount of concrete we are using on the building was becoming demanding over the process. Also, this soil is actually full of uh, air pockets, which uh, was uh, leading us to a um, slab of over uh, 70 centimeters on the ground. Uh, so while designing the building, we were becoming aware of a lot of um, problems or, or constraints, let's say it, that would raise the, the, um, the cost of the building. Uh, and also, of course, uh, the proximity to the ocean, uh, which could be seen as an opportunity, uh, but is actually uh, a big constraint when you're building in concrete, uh, because it raises the category of concrete. And if uh, until like two years ago, uh, we were uh, building by the ocean with uh, concrete mixed with fly ashes, that would come from the thermoelectric uh, uh, centrals, they just got closed in Portugal. So we are out of fly ashes, which means that we would have to uh, upgrade the, um, the kind of concrete and the building is getting expensive and expensive. 
Um, and of course, about still about uh, about the site constraints and the site opportunities, um, we are actually there. Uh, so we are very very near the south the south coast of Portugal, uh, which means of course the proximity with the with the beaches. It seems every everything it's like the perfect location for uh, for a vineyard. Uh, but of course, it it, it brings uh, this very specific uh, site and soil uh, constraints that we were uh, dealing while making. And of course, we are in Algarve, so as a as a um, as a site constraint or or opportunity, there's also the warm climate uh, that we could of course uh, absorb as an opportunity to have more uh, open air spaces. Uh, and this is actually uh, interesting because uh, we are now uh, on the role of designing a second version of the same building. Uh, and uh, one of the biggest constraints is actually the, the local uh, regulation or the legislation. And we are actually facing uh, three uh, uh, different um, entities, being one, the city hall, uh, with of course the Plano Director Municipal, uh, where we are constrained by the footprint and mostly uh, by the height of the building. Uh, but we are also constrained by Reserva Ecológica Natural and Reserva, Reserva Agrícola Natural. So it's actually the worst location for building a building, uh, but it's in the other way, uh, the perfect location for building a, a vineyard. Um, so actually we were, uh, on the first uh, approach to the building, we were totally concerned about the building footprint the building height, the impermeability index, and we uh, were uh, kind of forced to concentrate a building uh, into a two-story building with the inner patio. Um, so we were creating uh, this building where the inner patio was still part of the program, but it was not counting as a construction area. So while doing this, we were kind of becoming aware uh, that in each one of these different entities, there were different limits for building the building, and there was uh, different criteria applied on how to measure these limits. Um, and this actually allowed us um, to think now in a, in a new kind of building, which, are, which we are still doing. Uh, so I'm just making a pause on this discourse just to explain it. This is kind of the touristic uh, floor where you would have the, the hall looking to the main patio, a small shop, a uh, restaurant, and there's like the, all the going around the patio that would uh, cross the building all around, a small um, audiovisual room upstairs, and the, the down floor, much more technical, uh, again with a linear but around the patio uh, route, uh, because the building was designed that tourists, so that tourists could actually go inside every room. Uh, but while designing this uh, this building and while getting uh, really close to the, these entity, entities, we actually uh, realized that uh, uh, making uh, the building in two floors and having these uh, containing walls uh, was actually. Uh, What's, what was making us building in concrete that was getting expensive and expensive. And of course, with this uh, COVID experience, building in whatever would get expensive. Uh, but of course, by getting near to these uh, entities, we uh, ended up by uh, realizing that the patio approach that we had here for this very specific part of the program uh, would now uh, let us to uh, externalize a big part of this um, building. Uh, and so we are starting to look at the building uh, in a different approach to the program by deciding what really has to be inside and what can really be outside. And in this way, we are actually um, making the building match much more the um, the, the, the site it, it is being uh, conceived for. And we are also creating a kind of, uh, uh, I'm sorry, we are also kind of creating 
a new typology of building that we are trying to get away of uh, the first images that we, are, we were creating. They were actually creating by images that we had on our minds. And this second opportunity to build the same building is actually uh, letting us know how to better fit uh, not only um, the legislation, but also um, the optimization between what we are building and what we are paying to make the building. Yeah, that's my